Ching, I'm Richard Moorcroft and uh, welcome again to Letters and Numbers. Here we don't just do it by the book, we do it by the calculator as well. And our favourite calculator with us once again, Lily Serna. Hi Richard. Now Lily, uh, just like a calculator, you are obviously very good at solving the, the mathematical problems, but do you actually have a go at the word problems while they're coming up? I do, I, I, but the way I approach the problem is in a very systematic and but I never seem to arrive at the answers because I start with one letter and then systematically go through each letter and try the every combination. permutations and combinations. It exactly. doesn't seem to work for me too well, but... <laughs> the mathematical approach to language. Well, we're very grateful for the math skills, but welcome back again, Lily. <laughs> and the man who makes sure that we do it by the book, as long as that book is the dictionary in front of him, our word referee, David Astle. Hi. Hi, Richard. Well, I have to ask you the question the other way around, of course, David. Uh, while uh, you know, while Lily's there solving those problems, have have you already cracked the maths problems? Uh, well, look, there's good reason why I'm sitting here with a dictionary. Uh, <laughs> it's probably my one chance to breathe in the show, but uh, I will have a go at ones that uh, where the target number ends in zero. It always seems a little easier, but that's probably totally wrong. <laughs> I have to say, I'm completely terrified by the maths <laughs> ones as well. But welcome, David. Thank you. And also, of course, let's meet our contestants tonight. Our carryover champ, first of all, Andrew Fisher, an auditor who has represented the UK and Australia in Scrabble. It is his third night tonight. He also enjoys solving, but composing as well, crosswords. In fact, I heard a rumour that you've had some published in The Times, is that right? That's right. I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the tough cryptic crosswords. So obviously I'm a fan of David's Earth as well. Uh, but I've had a few published in the Times, yes. So is there a little bit of a uh, little bit of competition amongst you know crossword creators as to who gets published and where and how and so on? Is it hard to get published uh, as a crossword creator? You have to you have to hit your straps, I suppose, and you have to uh, I mean, you get a few knockbacks, and then eventually you get on the ladder and, and work your way up. Yes. Well, you've certainly been hitting your straps on the last few nights uh, with us. So good luck tonight. Our challenger is Adib Sarani, a pure mathematics student who has been winning maths competitions since the age of seven. He's actually known amongst his friends as a calculator substitute. Well, welcome, uh, Adib. Now, I gather you've also got uh, an ambition, uh, a big one, and I hope I get this right. You would like to be able to solve, if possible, the Riemann hypothesis. Yep, that's right, Richard. So what is the, the Riemann hypothesis? Well, it's an unsolved problem in mathematics. I think one of the most important ones that's unsolved right now. Sort of almost like a mathematical holy grail. Yes, it is. And how many years ago was this? Um, the hypothesis was conjectured, uh, I think, more than 100 years ago. So it still hasn't been solved in 100 years. It, does, it, does it still have contemporary applications or important uh, yeah. aspects to it? Yeah, it has implications in things like internet security. Internet security? Yeah. A problem from 100 years ago. How, how would those tie in together? It could make this security more easily breakable, among other things. Oh, fascinating implications. Yeah. Good luck tonight with the challenge this evening. Would you please welcome our two contestants as they settle into play letters and numbers tonight, Andrew Fisher and Adib Sarani. And, of course, we always start with the letters game. Players have 30 seconds to make a word, the aim being to use more letters than their opponent. So, Andrew, what do you fancy to start with? Oh, thank you, Richard. I'll start with um, a consonant, please, Lily. Thanks, Andrew. Starting the day with an N. And another one. B. And a third. S. A uh, fourth consonant, please. V. Uh, a vowel. I. And another. U. And a third, please. A. A consonant. R. And a vowel, please. And to finish, E. And our first 30 seconds for tonight. Andrew, how did you go with the first challenge? I have an eight. An eight, lovely start. What about you, Eddie? I've got six. What's your six? Brains. 
Brains. Well, we certainly like to have them. They're a, a prerequisite. But uh, Andrew, how did you go with the with the eight? What was that? Um, I have urbanize. Urbanize. Very nice word as well. Just to spell it for for clarification, if you could, is U R B A N I S E. Using your brains beautifully. It's a wonderful eight and the best to be found. Well done. Well played. Excellent work. So straight onto the scoreboard eight for Andrew. And onto our second letters round. And Adib, your choice. Thanks, Richard. Um, Lily, can I start off with a vowel? You can. Thank you, Adib. Starting with an O. Um, followed by a consonant. T. And another consonant. P. Uh, a vowel, please. I. And another vowel. E. Can I have a consonant? May L. And another consonant, please. D. And a vowel. A, and last and one. And I'll end off with another consonant. Thank you. Ending with a J. Thanks, Lily. Time starts now. How did you go with your choice? I've got seven. Seven? That sounds good. Andrew? I have seven. What's your seven, Andrew? It's tadpole. Oh, lovely. And uh, Adib? I've got plated. P-L-I-T-E-D. -I, -I, -E I guess like sort of plaited hair or oh, something of plated. that sort. Yes, fine. Plaited as in plaited hair, braided hair. And tadpole, one of my favourite. Oh, I was just going to say, always got a soft spot for tadpoles. <laughs> Both fine and uh, excellent sevens. Excellent. So seven each for Andrew and Adib. Bringing the scores, Adib on seven and Andrew total of 15. Let's start to play with the numbers now, and uh, there are points available, of course, for the player who gets closest to the randomly generated target using the six numbers that they have selected. Again, 30 seconds in which to do it. And, Andrew, your selection, please. Could I have one from the top, please, Lily, and five from the bottom? One large and five small. Thank you. And smalls are eight, nine, four, three and six, and the large one is 75, and the target number is 505. Thanks, Lily. 30 seconds to get there. Close did you get? I have 505. Nicely on target. What about you, Adib? I've got 508. 508. Three off the mark. So, uh, Andrew, take us through your method, please. I believe it is 75 plus 8. 75 plus 8. 83. Multiplied by 6. By the 6 gives you... Is it 498? 498. It does 498. And then you've got 4 and 3 left, making 7. Add on. Plus the four and the three gives you 505. Well done. Very nice. Very nice indeed, Andrew. Right on target. Lily, did you manage to get the solution, but did you do it in the same way? I did it a different way. Uh, now, 75 plus the nine times the six times the six gives you 504. And if you... Take away the three from the four, add that on 505. Very neat as well. Thank you, Lily. So, 10 points to Andrew. Uh, that brings him up to 25. Adib is on seven as we go into our word mix. And this time it's Lend Yogi. And the clue singing on high. Back after the break. Yeah. 